What's going on YouTube? It's your buddy Will from the What's Up in the Sky 37 channel online at www.whatsupinthesky.com and today's space news it is January 20th 2015 I haven't had space news for a little while took the weekend off from videos uh, celebrated my father's birthday he passed away this year this was his first birthday uh, since he passed away so it was a sad but fun we had some fun uh, celebrated got some amazing comments from you guys on Facebook here it's just it's amazing the community from uh, space community we've put together here from all the little channels and uh, everything and all you guys out there who comment and have just you know send me pictures to work so a lot of good pictures coming up but we have some interesting space news coming up planet X may really lurk undiscovered in our solar system we've got this story we've got the long lost beetle found um, CIA says all the UFOs were us well, not all of them, most of them. And uh, another Space News article about moon mining. So let's get right on into it. Also, the Rosetta Craft, is our New Horizons probe is getting near Pluto. There's a lot going on in Space News coming up. A um, lot coming up. A lot of good pictures coming up, too. So we got a lot of fun here. So let me read a little bit of this to you. And uh, as always, these are going to be linked below. Planet X may actually exist. And so may Planet Y. There's actually two of these things out there. At least two planets larger than Earth likely lurk in the dark depths of space far beyond Pluto, just waiting to be discovered. A new analysis of the orbits of the extreme trans-Neptunian objects suggests. Research study 13 ETNOs, frigid bodies such as dwarf planet Sedona, or Sedna, and the crews around the sun at great distances in elliptical paths. All right. Um, theory predicts certain of these for orbits. Study team member says, okay, there's certain here. We're going to bounce down to the uh, to what's going on here. But the actual orbits of the 13 ETNOs are quite different, with the semi-major axes ranging from 150 to 525 AU, which AU is from here to the sun. But 150, I think it says 150 this is 93 million miles. Okay. The excess of these objects with the unexpected orbital perimeters makes us believe that some invisible forces are altering the distribution of the orbital elements of the ETNOs. We consider that the most probable explanation is that there's other unknown planets that exist far beyond Neptune and Pluto. Leader of the Carlos del Frencho Marcos of the Compulsant University of Mandarin. Um, said in a statement, the exact number is uncertain. Given the data we have is limited, but our calculation says there are at least two planets, and probably more, with confines in our solar system. Uh, the potential undiscovered worlds would be more massive than Earth, researchers say. That's pretty neat. And would lie about 200 AU or more from the sun. So far away that they'd be very difficult, if not impossible, to spot with current instruments. All right. So the new results detailed in two papers spread by, okay, basically, Keep going through this, keep going through this. So pretty cool. So I guess what we're doing is they're looking at these 13 planets, or little exoplanets, or whatever they call them. They're out there, and uh, you know they're dwarf planets, and they've they're being acted on. And I, we've heard this the whole Planet X thing. Of course, I'm not going to get into the conspiracies behind Nibiru or the Anunnaki and stuff like that here on my channel. Just never have, most likely never will. Um, I never fully bought into it. I don't think there's a Planet X that's going to smash into our thing. Just like I didn't think Comet Ison was going to take us out. Just like, you know, I uh, think we're going to be here for a long time talking space news. Unless we end up knocking ourselves off as a species. I uh, think that that might be more of a case than something coming from the outside world and getting us. But who knows? These things just fly on by. And this was kind of cool. Lost. 2003 Mars lander found by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. This is the high rise took this piece. And uh, let's see here. This is the enhanced version of it. And this is how they found it. Let me hit play for you here so you can see through their, uh, just a little bit of it here. Of course, JPL, NASA, this is their copy, right? Now, this was expected to land on December 25th. The movie you're watching here is a sequence of three high-rise images that were taken of an object that might be the Beagle 2 lander in Isidus Planitia. It was seen first as a series of bright spots. These bright spots are not uncommon in spacecraft images as cosmic rays strike the CCD. It's in two of the high-rise images, so we know they're on the ground. They're not artifacts of a cosmic ray strike on the CCD. The third image was taken recently, and I've taken the color channel from that third image, and I've used it to colorize the first two. The object itself seems to have different points on it that are catching glints from one image to another. 
From this, we're interpreting that we may actually be looking at the Beagle 2 lander and that it is actually in some deployed condition. Whether all the panels have been opened up or not is yet to be determined by the, the Beagle team. Pretty interesting. Looks like they might have found it. Um, it landed on Mars, built by United Kingdom, has been thought been lost on Mars in 2003. The set of three observations. We heard what the man said. So they're thinking here, let me pull this up here, that the rear covers back here, that the parachute's there, and what we were looking at here in that picture was the Beagle 2. Pretty interesting. It's hard to land these things on Mars, and we give I give credit to NASA. They've done a hell of a job getting them up there. Here's the picture itself, and uh, this is so this is a 10-mile... Um, or 10 meter, I guess 10 miles since it's coming from NASA. Uh, so that's very, very small. There's no way that that's 10 miles. Hold on. Yeah, there's no way that little glimpse is. So it's got to be meters. But either way, I thought this was pretty cool. Of course, my guys thought my people here would enjoy it. If you want to check out the actual pictures, if you come to this link, I'll link these up. Always link it below the the space news or whatever i'm doing i always link stuff below for you guys to check this stuff out yourself click here and you can download the actual image it's pretty neat so here let's go to the cia and the ufos next this is another one from space.com and this has been all over the web cia all about ufos of the 50s and the 60s it was us everything us so many of the unidentified flying objects spotted by people and then we knew this middle of the last century were oh oh actually high flying spy planes officials from the united states cia say on december 29th cia officials said to following twitter number one most read on our best of 2014 list reports of unusual activity in the skies of the 50s it was us attached to the tweet was a pdf of the cia and the U-2 program. So they're basically saying the U-2 spy plane was a lot of the UFOs. Now, of course, if you go back, and it can't explain for all of them. Um, that definitely might look like a UFO to somebody in the 50s, though, especially if they saw it at a uh, really high distance, I could see. But a lot of some of these, some of these, uh, if you go back and read just in general, um, some of these were quiet air quiet things or hovering over people's houses so this is not going to do all of it but I'm, I'm sure that there was a lot more just the u2 that they were doing but i thought they was just kind of interesting they came out and said that now just randomly <laughs> you know so all right now the moon and mining we already think that somebody has mine here what's up in the sky.com me i think somebody's been mining the moon i've got plenty of videos that show mining operations up there old mining operations but look like equipment um, definitely dug out certain, I mean, we've even got a video where there looks like mining on Mars as well. So the moon would be definitely up there to uh, to let us get some stuff, especially with some of the, the, the elements it has up there that we uh, could be going for. So the moon may offer pay dirt with the rewarding mother load of resources, a celestial gift that is literally up for grabs. Well, it could be wars over this stuff eventually. But what's really there, for, isn't that sad you think about that, that there could be wars over this stuff lately? Like, humanity is so screwed up that we can't even get together to worry about natural resources, to care about this stuff, to ration this stuff. There's just no no caring or inclination of caring ever. The new assessment of what, let me don't get off my bandwagon here, or get off my soapbox, a new assessment of whether or not there's an economic case for mining the moon has been put forward by Ian Crawford, a professor of planetary science and astrobiology at the Birkbeck College, London. His appraisal is to appear in the forthcoming issue of the Journal Progress and Physical Ge Geography. All right, Crawford said it's hard to identify any single lunar resource that will be sufficiently valuable to drive a lunar resource extraction industry on its own. Nonetheless, he said the moon does possess about abundant raw materials that are of potential economic interests. Lunar resources could be used to help build the industrial infrastructure in near space, uh, near Earth space, Crawford said. A view shared by space enthusiast and scientist Paul Spodos so of the Atlantic uh, LPI. That's a uh, wonderful organization. Puts out a lot of good stuff. If the moon's resources are going to be helpful, they're going to be helpful beyond the surface of the moon itself, Crawford said. Still, the overall case for any future payoff from exploiting the moon's resources has yet to be made. It's quite complicated, he told Space.com. It's not simple at all. Vanishing resources. But one of the skepticisms from Crawford concerns helium-3. Helium-3 is what I'm thinking about up there. I mean, that has got an amazing 
energy potential. Advocates envision mining of the moon for this isotope of helium, which gets embedded into the upper layer of the lunar regolith by solar wind over billions of years. Hauling back this stuff from the moon could power still-to-be-built nuclear fission reactors here on Earth, advocates say. Doesn't make sense. The whole helium-3 argument, Crawford said. Strip mining lunar systems over hundreds of square kilometers would produce lots of helium-3, he said. But the substance is a limited resource. It's fossil fuel reserve, like mining all the coal. Like there's, here's what it's fossil fuel reserve. It's fossil fuel reserve. Like okay, like we haven't mined and taken it out here on Earth as much as possible. So I guess it's not feasible to go do this either so let's see here like mining all the coal or mining in the oil once you've mined it it's gone Crawford said the investment requires an infrastructure necessary to help solve the world's future energy needs via moon extracted helium-3 is enormous and might better be used to develop genuine renewable energy sources here on earth he added see now I would think that the the H3 I would like the H3 to be used to maybe for rockets and stuff to get past here maybe that's like the gas station for when we actually take these planets and go to to mars we go find out what's on uh you know titan when we take these trips you know it's possible that helium-3 and other solar wind implicated ions like hydrogen may be in a higher abundance in the cold regolith near the lunar poles that would be important measurement to make or require polar lander crawford said such information would increase researchers knowledge not only of the helium and three inventory but also the possible use of solar wind implemented elements like helium-4 as well as hydrogen carbon and nitrogen resources he added um, consistent story at top of the list a must-do action item Crawford said is determining how much water is truly locked up in the moon's polar craters remote sensing of the moon from orbiting spacecraft include radar radar data and is telling a consistent story about its resources which can be produced into oxygen and rocket fuel water on the moon that's a, another link to their stuff so but to really get to the bottom of it we need an in-situ on-the-spot measurement from the surface of the lunar poles, Crawford said. It's a first on my list of necessary steps, and when we have an answer to that, we can plan accordingly. So better knowledge of the available of rare Earth elements on the moon would also be valuable. So basically saying, um, you know, we're having, we're, we're, <laughs> we're seeing it there, we're going to go get it, but it's going to be hard to get it. Maybe we shouldn't go get it because of helium-3, because it's, it's not going to be there. But I just want more more and more stuff sent to the moon i mean honestly we should be we should have built a lunar base that's going to be our first step to taking launches to other lands i would love to see that it would be nice to have something up there um, especially if it could pull back that but how's it going to be done is it going to have to be done by the private organization i mean if it's going to be it's up for grabs it's either going to have to be done privately if it's done by space agencies here it it could be wars so a lot of helium-3 up there. Don't let this, this fool you here at all. There's a lot there to be had, and there will be arguments of whose that is. Look who's put stuff up there later. China's brought some stuff to the moon. Japan's brought stuff to the moon. There's a lot of major players. Um, I know India's going to be making a play for the moon. I mean, they already made a play for Mars. Way to just come out shooting. So, all right, guys, I'm going to leave you that with space news. Anything else happened? Well, let's see. What was else? There's a uh, the New Horizons probe is approaching Pluto. Let's see. This thing's pretty cool. I think I got a picture of it up here. There it is. And uh, it's scheduled to make its much anticipated flyby on July 14th. So, it's uh, out and about. It's making its way through the cosmic bodies. It's going to be a fun one. January 26th, there's a huge asteroid. It's going to make a close flyby on Earth. So uh, Space Rock will be about 745,000 miles um, from the planet when it passes. So that's, that's, that's pretty close. Um, making the asteroid's closest approach to Earth in the next 200 years. So pretty interesting. Um, also, there's a moon land out there. But China's apparently the, uh, the Chandra 3 is still doing stuff on the moon. So we haven't had anything or seen anything back from it, but the uh, China moon lander has spotted a picture of the pinwheel galaxy. Um, let me see if I can actually get it to come up here. It's a photo here. It's pretty neat. And so this was supposedly taken from the lander that's sitting out on the moon. So it's still out there doing stuff. We haven't seen as many pictures as I thought we were going to um, from India. So this is from China, but from India of Mars, we really haven't seen anything back yet. I thought we would from their uh, 
from the Mars mission that's out there, the mom mission. I really thought we were going to get more stuff. And China, I thought once we got up there, we started getting all these pictures back. There looked like in the distance there was a pyramid. It looked like all sorts of weird stuff up there. And uh, next thing we know, we haven't gotten anything back. So this, I guess, is what they've got taken from the uh, lander. Now, we didn't see many uh, stars from the NASA footage, so it would be interesting to find out how this was taken. So I'll do a little bit of research for you guys. I'll get back to you. All right, guys, look out for the Mars anomalies. i got some moon anomalies coming up, some good stuff, these Venus anomalies, Mercury. There's a lot i got to get to. I've uh, got a lot of energy starting a new year now. I've, uh, yeah, I've had some uh, health problems in the, in the past. I don't really talk about it much, but they're uh, getting taken care of. I've had... Uh, started certain therapies and certain different uh, medications and stuff and I feel like a lot better I got a lot more energy um, so hopefully you'll get a lot more videos I'll have my energy back like when I first started making videos back in the day like I said it's been a tough year especially with my losing my dad this year I've had to take on a lot more work other than just my work uh, you know I'm a full-time information technology director uh, for a health company so we've got about 25 offices I run all the computers for the networks um, and I do this here stuff for you, and I've got a whole house to take care of, and yards, and all sorts of good stuff. But one of my favorite things is space anomalies and the space news, and you guys out there. So I will always be making your videos, always come back to find more anomalies. Much love to you. January 20th, this is Will Farrar. I'm going to let you go here. Have a good one. Come check me out at what'supinthesky.com. Peace.